back now to our top story, Fox News Alert, and these are live pictures from the spot where President Obama is scheduled to deliver a major speech on national security in moments. He is at the National Archives, which his press secretary says makes sense, quote, under the circumstances and not much more than that. But this speech lays out the president's arguments for closing Gitmo and for bringing some of the terror suspects down there here into the United States. Those two things now very important because every decision the president has made regarding Guantanamo Bay from closing it down to housing terrorists here in the U.S. has been criticized, not just from Republicans, but now all of Congress is demanding answers on this. Major Garrett is live at the White House. Major, uh, Congress, I mean, the Senate coming out with a 90 to 6 vote yesterday against funding the president's request to close Gitmo. What does the president hope to accomplish in this speech in light of that? Buy some time, Megan. The White House knows that what they're facing on Capitol Hill is a political meltdown and a legislative rejection of the idea of closing Guantanamo Bay and dealing with the detainees there without an elaborate, specific, and well-understood plan across the country for what it becomes of those detainees. The White House doesn't have it, says it's formulating it, and in that vacuum, Congress has said, Mr. President, without a plan, we are not going to go back home to our constituents and say, yes, detainees may or may not come here. We don't want to know what their facilities are going to be like. We don't know how they're going to be tried. We don't know any of these questions or answers to the questions you have, and they're legitimate questions, so now we're going to ask them of the White House, and until they answer them to our satisfaction, not one dime will go to the closing of Guantanamo. And it's interesting, Megan, the way legislation went on to the Senate yesterday. Not only did Congress say you can't have any money in this pending supplemental appropriations bill, it also said you can't reprogram money that's already been approved for another purpose, mm -hmm. meaning there's no money. You can't find it anywhere to close Guantanamo until you produce a plan. Today's speech, however, will not outline that plan, Megan. It will try to create some rhetorical space for that plan to be developed, give the White House some time, which it doesn't have right now. Major, is this, I mean, you covered Capitol Hill and the White House for some time. Is this an embarrassment for President Obama that his own party would reject him on the first thing he did when he got into office was to issue that order closing Gitmo, and now they are rejecting him on that, saying, sounds good in theory, you don't have the plan. And until you do, you're not getting the money to do it. Remember the optics of that day, January 22nd, here at the White House. He had, that is to say, the president, many retired military generals standing behind him, applauding that executive order. The signal was, this is consistent with American national security interests. I have lots of former generals, military officials saying I'm doing the right thing. Well, all of those pictures and all of that symbolism has completely drifted away and meant nothing on the harsh reality on Capitol Hill when lawmakers have to answer their constituents about what's going to become of these detainees. Absent a plan, they're not going to write one single check to this White House. I asked Robert Gibbs yesterday, was this a hasty decision by the president? Would it have been better for him to have a plan and then announce the closing of Guantanamo? He said, no, we've sequenced this properly. But clearly the legislative reaction is they did not. You know, he, he has reversed himself on military tribunals. He reversed himself on the release of the photos showing detainee abuse or prisoner abuse. And many are hoping that he will reverse himself on this order closing Gitmo because there are major questions about what we do with the prisoners down there. We will see what he has to say uh, when he takes to these microphones moments from now. Major Garrett's on it for us. Major, thanks so much. Of course. And uh, for more on this, we are joined now by Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger, a Democrat from Maryland and a member of the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, my guest now. Congressman, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, we heard our discussion with Major, and you know about the rebuke, not just in the Senate, but also in the House, on the president's request for financing to close Gitmo. Uh, an overwhelming message from lawmakers on Capitol Hill that it's not time. There's, no, there's not a plan in place that satisfies the, uh, the American people or the lawmakers who represent them. Do you agree? Well, first thing, the issue is a plan. Uh, I heard the, the comment about this is a failure. This is not a failure. Uh, this is a very serious situation. It's very difficult to work out what we're going to do with these prisoners. Uh, the Bush administration has been able to move over 500. I think there are 240 left right now. But this is what the check and balance is about between the administration and Congress. And Congress is saying we need a plan and we have a plan. Do now, you, there's another issue I'd like we, to... We need, we need yeah, a plan. Yeah. Before we get to your other issue, we need a plan and we have a plan. Where's the plan? That, that's the problem. Major Garrett just reporting the well, president doesn't have know, a plan know, yet. I, and, and Congress rejecting the financing request to close Gitmo because co Congress, including Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, leader saying uh, 
you don't have a plan and you have to have it before we're going to finance this. And, and that's what we're going to be working on with the help of Congress. Uh, you know, I'm on the Intelligence Committee. I see, deal with terrorism every day. You know the risk. The bottom line that we're talking about here is national security. I think one issue, though, I do want to raise is the issue of bringing people to the United States, those people who've committed crimes and trying them. I was a former prosecutor. Uh, there are bad people all over the United States. They're murderers, they're rapists, whatever. And we have a system of U.S. Marshals, and we have a system that we try people and we put them in jail for a long time. So I'm not as concerned about trying people here, but I am concerned about national security and the perception of national security. So I'm willing to work with the president and move forward with a plan. The message is clear. It, these plans don't happen overnight. And if, there, if we had a plan, the Bush administration would have used the plan. But it's a difficult situation. Well, the situation Bush administration had a plan, which was keep Gitmo, keep, keep, keep the military tribunals in place and try them down at Gitmo, which is no longer going to be an option if Gitmo closes. And, and speaking to your concern of national security, you know, uh, the, the FBI director, Robert Mueller, came out and said the problem yeah. if you bring these folks into the United States is, and right. I won't, don't put it in my words, he says, I'm, I'm worried that they will provide financing or that financing will be provided more here in the United States for their causes and that they will, quote, radicalize others. So he's against the, uh, the notion of bringing these Gitmo detainees here in the United States. How do you get around Admiral well, Mueller, or, uh, Mr. Mueller's I, I don't get around that. I'm not saying that we should bring them to the United States. I'm saying that we... If we do bring them, we bring them pursuant to our system of justice. We have people who commit murders in the United States and go to other countries, and we extradite them back. So it's not an issue of bringing people that are not going to be tried. We're talking about bringing criminals here and trying them and then putting them in jail if they're convicted. That's our system of justice. But it, and the plan issue is, needs to be worked with Congress, and that's what, what the president is saying. I, I had a conversation with the president last night at the White House, and he understands that it is a very difficult situation, and he is not ready for the plan, and that's why the plan is not coming forward because they don't have one yet. If he's and not ready for the plan, sure why is he one? asking for financing to close Gitmo? I mean, shouldn't the plan come before he's spending money to close the facility? It should, it should be both. But, but it, it's not an easy situation. And we can't do this in a week or hope maybe even a month. When we do it, it's right. We have to negotiate with other countries that take back these, these individuals to make sure when they go to other countries, they don't, they don't cause harm in that country or cause harm in the United States. Well, again. what happens Remember, here, Congressman, if you bring them here in the United States and you try them yeah. here in the United States court and they're found not guilty, which a lot of people are worried about because some of the evidence we have against these guys was obtained through enhanced interrogation techniques, much of which could not be introduced into evidence. So the concern is you may try them here, but they're going to get off because they're going to have the full benefits of our, of our legal rules. So once, so That's if these guys get acquitted on U.S. soil, what's to stop the judge from then saying, you know, somebody like Mr. Musawi, you're free to go? Well, in the first place, prosecutors move forward with cases because they feel they're going to win those cases. And if I, if I were prosecuting these individuals in the United States of America, I'd make sure I had a good case or I wouldn't bring this case to the United States. Yeah, but so that's that's how you're saying you've you got to guarantee but a conviction. That's not the way the system works. Sometimes people are acquitted, sometimes they're not. I'm not saying you're guaranteed a conviction at all. We have a system of justice in this country, and when we go against our freedom and liberties and democracy and how we take care of people, whether they're bad people or not. I've tried many, many a bad person who's in jail now. There are other bad people that have gotten off, but that's our system of justice where you have to prove somebody guilty beyond a reasonable doubt to a moral certainty. But it is not an easy situation, whether it's the Bush administration or whether it's Obama. But the, the good news is that Congress has stepped up and is saying, you've got to have a plan. We want to be a part of this plan. Our job is to protect our country, like you, Mr. President. And if we work it together, we will find a way to resolve this issue. There have already been 500 prisoners moved already under the Bush administration. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's, it's a positive way. We've moved 500. The issue, though, is that the system that's set up now has no real end game. Where do we put people? What, what are you going to be indicted for? What are you going to be tried for? What countries are going to take you back? Yeah. Who's at risk and who's not? Yeah. A lot, a lot of questions that have been raised. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons President Obama did not get the money that he was seeking, because that we still don't have answers, and, at least not this morning, Congressman. Uh, the I, system I, works. Th thank you so much. I appreciate you being here, Congressman Rupert okay, Berger. Fine. All the best.